Diabetes is the fastest growing illness among children in the world. In fact, one out of seven children, children will be diagnosed with diabetes uh, this year alone. In the United States, there's over 23 million diabetics. That represents 8% of the population. This is truly an epidemic worldwide. It's an epidemic here in the United States. The question is why. I believe it has everything to do with what, we are, what, what one is eating, with what one is drinking. Also, even the emotional states of folks can contribute to this one condition, which I believe is caused by an over-acidification of the blood and tissues due to an inverted way of living, eating, and thinking. These two types of diabetes, type 1, which is insulin dependent, type 2, which is non-insulin dependent, that deal with uh, the levels of blood sugar, whether they be high or whether they be low, is 100% reversible. I first met the Romans uh, last year, uh, Sally Roman, uh, the mother of uh, Gabriel Roman and also, also Nathan Roman. Uh, she called me and uh, uh, said uh, that her, her son was uh, in the honeymoon stages of diabetes uh, and that he was type 1 diabetic and uh, the prognosis uh, from the doctor was, was not good. There was no way to beat type 1 diabetes. In fact, no one has ever beaten type 1. Once your, your pancreas is not functioning, uh, it's properly, it's not producing the amount of insulin uh, necessary, that uh, you'll eventually end up uh, uh, injecting insulin in order to, to maintain blood glucose. And that uh, the reversal of type 1 diabetes just has never happened. Well, she ended up calling me. And when she called me, I, I told her, well, that just isn't the case. Uh, type 1 diabetes uh, is reversible. And being probably one of the only doctors in the world that has had success with type 1 diabetes, uh, our success rate has been uh, incredible. In fact, those who actually followed my instructions, my lifestyle and eating plan uh, and nutritional program uh, would uh, not only uh, reverse type 1 diabetes, but uh, uh, their energies and all uh, would improve all the symptoms associated uh, with uh, those uh, initial uh, stages of type 1 diabetes, which is uh, fatigue and tiredness and lightheadedness and dizziness, uh, were all associated with symptoms of congestion of the root system or the small bowel of the, of the body. And as I told Sally, I said, Sally, you know, most doctors perceive that type 1 diabetes uh, focal point uh, is with the pancreas and with uh, the high glucose or the high blood, blood uh, sugars or low blood sugars. And I said, this is just uh, not the case, that the diabetes was actually a reflection of the health of the small bowel and that if we could clear the bowel and uh, bring health to that part of the body, uh, that that would put, bring stress off the pancreas. Uh, most folks don't realize that the pancreas, uh, is m one of its main purposes is not just to provide uh, insulin, but also to provide sodium bicarbonate to help alkalize the food as it comes out of the stomach. So uh, if we could then develop uh, an eating plan that uh, Nathan could uh, embrace, uh, that he had a good chance of reversing this. When I saw Gabriel, you know, I, he had the typical outward appearances of, uh, of a type 1 diabetic, underweight, uh, he was tired, uh, he was fatigued, and uh, uh, he, uh, he, just, he just wanted uh, his life back. He wanted more energy. He wanted to, be, he wanted to feel like other, uh, other kids. He wanted to be able to go out and play uh, uh, with, with energy and, and vigor, and he just didn't have that. And he wanted to do whatever it took uh, to reverse this condition. And I, and I saw that uh, not only uh, in his eyes, but I also felt it in, in the words that he spoke to as well. And uh, so I knew that he was going to be a, a great candidate. If uh, anyone was going to beat this, uh, Gabriel was going to beat it. And so we sat down and, and we talked about his condition. And, and one of the things I like to ask uh, uh, anyone, and particularly children, what do you eat? Uh, and particularly, what did you eat for breakfast? And he started telling me uh, all the acidic foods that, that he enjoyed, you know, from cereals to, uh, to dairy products uh, and onward. He, we talked about this, and I said uh, to him, Gabriel, one of the things that's going to be the most challenging for you 
um, to help beat this condition of what I believe was overacidity, uh, they were looking from, from the perspective of uh, high blood sugars, is to eliminate all of the, the acidic, the, the acid contributors in your lifestyle and diet. And one of those, of course, is what you eat and what you drink. So no more soda pops, uh, no more fruit juices uh, for breakfast, uh, no more uh, uh, milk uh, drinks or dairy products, and, and especially uh, no more animal proteins. No chicken, no beef, no pork, no fish. This diet, uh, this eating plan, uh, focuses on building the blood so everything has to move back to green foods and green drinks. And so we sat down and uh, I took uh, a drop of blood, uh, capillary blood. I put it on a blood slide. We magnified it up about 20,000 times. And uh, uh, in fact, I've got it right here and you can see it. As, I, as you see the blood, you, you can see some of the white spots on the red blood cells. When this was the typical marker for diabetes, and I, I, I showed Gabriel, I said, this is what uh, red blood cells look like when they begin to break down. They begin to ferment, and as they begin to ferment, their proteins, uh, their fats, and also their sugars are released into the bloodstream. And this is why your blood sugars are going up. Up is because, just like a banana, when it ripens, it gets sweeter and sweeter. This is what ha is happening to you, Gabriel. Your red blood cells are getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter, and it's releasing blood sugars and it's going up and that's of course putting more demands on the pancreas. But this won't happen if we heal up the small bowel because my foundational theory is that blood is made in the crypts of the small intestine and if there's congestion there of chicken McNuggets or beef McNuggets or undigested food then the body cannot produce the proper amount not only in numbers but, the, but in quality too of red blood cells to help provide the foundational body cells, the red blood cells, uh, to help build healthy uh, tissue, uh, organs, you know, muscles and bones. And so this was going to be uh, the focus and, and he embraced this uh, immediately. And this was wonderful. And then I showed him, and as you can see right now on the screen, I showed him his dry blood. And I said, uh, Gabriel, these are the patterns that you see in the dry blood. Look to the center. Do you see the dark center? That's undigested food, undigested animal protein. And you see the white areas inside the center? Those white areas are indications of breakdown in the small intestine, irritation or inflammation in that part of the body. And I said, as that heals, then what will happen is uh, this process of body cells and blood cells breaking down, raising the blood sugar levels will actually stop and we'll be able to normalize your blood sugars and you won't have to you won't have to be diabetic anymore and he thought that was just a wonderful thing and he so he was so excited that he actually had the hope that all this was actually possible so he 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 actually took what i shared with him and of course with the support of his mother and and his other family members they began to to uh, start eating like this and uh, it was amazing what happened it was immediate gabriel's blood sugar started to normalize and the rest is his history. Uh, Gabriel is no longer uh, a type 1 diabetic.